From Nutrient Ag Solutions, I'm Senior Meteorologist Andrew Pritchard with your Canadian Prairie Weather Story for Monday, March 11th, 2024. We'll start off looking at the satellite picture here. We've got a little bit of a disturbance here, bringing some very light shower activity. We'll see that continue through midweek. It's going to unfortunately be another pretty dry week with very localized, light amounts of precipitation in the forecast here. You can see that represented well by the radar picture here again early on Monday morning. If you're watching this video a little later, perhaps take an updated look at the radar, but I don't expect any big surprises there. Again, it's going to be very isolated, localized light precipitation here as we go through the next seven to 10 days, if not a little bit longer. Unfortunately, just not a lot to get excited about as far as robust moisture here in this 10-day forecast. Not to, to make you check out early or anything like that, but we're going to be talking about a mild, dry week and then a trend toward a cooler, dry pattern as we head into week two. So those temperatures here, we talked about the rebound. We're a little bit warmer than we were a week ago this time. Those temperatures a bit above freezing here, a couple degrees above freezing along and south of Highway 16. You can find some sub-freezing temperatures as, as you make your way a little bit further north across portions of the prairie. Unfortunately, my precipitation maps here, my historical precip maps here, had an error last week, so I'm not able to show you that in higher resolution. But as we look at the last seven days, total precipitation in low res here, not a lot to get excited about. Again, we had a couple systems make their way through over the last seven to 10 days, but we did not overachieve with any of those by any stretch of the imagination. A lot of folks here in, in areas of, you know, southern uh, Alberta, southwestern Saskatchewan, where we were hoping to maybe overachieve with some of these systems. We're talking about single digit millimeters of precipitation here over the last seven days. And as we look for something that's going to mitigate or eradicate several years worth of drought across the region, of course, we need a whole scale shift into a long lasting wet pattern. And while we have, again, the potential for that to happen at some point here this spring, heading through the last part of winter into the early part of spring, it's not going to happen over the next two weeks or so. As we look at the next week of precipitation, again, on the light side, some parts of Alberta, southwest Saskatchewan, maybe just completely dry over the next seven days or so. We've got a, a little system that will dive in over the top of a building ridge late week that could bring some heavier, relatively speaking, precipitation to portions of eastern Saskatchewan into central and southern Manitoba. Again, late week. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But as we look at week two, Again, we start to open the door here to maybe a couple of smaller disturbances to make their way through, but we don't shift into a pattern that's really going to be targeting Western Canada with substantial precipitation in week two either. We really hold on to higher pressure across the region here, which is going to leave us kind of out to dry as far as, uh, you know, those hopes for, for a, uh, a, a miracle march or anything like that. It's not going to happen through mid-month. Uh, at this point. So we look at the next 10 days of snowfall from the European model here. This is actually the next eight days. It'll take us into early next week. Again, you can see very localized amounts here in some of the higher elevation areas, parts of eastern Saskatchewan, central and southern Manitoba, maybe, maybe picking up a light coating here from this system that comes in during the late part of the week. Now here's the jet stream pattern that is driving this. This is the period of troughing uh, across, you know, the Pacific portions of Western Canada here that I thought would open the door here to some scattered precipitation events. That's certainly what we're seeing here uh, as we get the week started, but nothing robust along with this. That low, a little bit off to the east here, kind of displaced from our area. And then as we animate this and head into the middle part of the week, you can see that this trough kind of break a piece of that off and it dips down into the uh, kind of the central Rockies and eventually uh, kind of even has trouble ejecting into the central plains of the U.S. So this one not really benefiting the prairie, not really benefiting uh, dry parts of the Corn Belt in the U.S. either. Instead, this low kind of just sinks off to the south. We rebuild a really intense uh, ridge of high pressure across British Columbia. This would be over the weekend, March 16th and 17th. We've got a trough developing across the Great Lakes right now. So this puts us into a period of really northerly, if not northwesterly flow. So as we head into next week, this will usher in some cooler temperatures. You see that flow coming out of the north, uh, but we also get that system that rides over the top of the ridge, brings in some lighter precipitation. That's what helps kind of amplify the trough here. Late week, that light chance of precipitation in eastern Saskatchewan, central and southern Manitoba before the ridge really takes uh, hold heading into the majority of next week. So this is what gives us Still a drier pattern with that ridge of high pressure, but now with that larger ridge, the trough to the east, we get northerly flow. That's going to allow some cooler weather to filter into the region. Now, we do not have any bitterly cold Arctic air stored just to our north, so we're trending cooler, but we're not bringing in a shot of bitterly cold, uh, you know, extremely deep winter air or anything like that. It's just going to be a cooler, drier pattern until we can shake this low uh, or the high across western Canada, which right now does not appear to be a permanent long-standing feature. The pattern continues to be fluid 
as we head into the late part of the uh, the late part of the the month of March here. But as we get into this, will be March 25th, March 26th. Still dealing with this big trough anchored from the Hudson Bay down into parts of the Upper Midwest. Uh, so this would maybe start to relax things, start to allow some systems to track through the region. But this is still a cooler, relatively drier pattern that's holding on into the late part of the month of March. So now we can look at this verbatim, the European precipitation forecast here. We just got an upgrade with this, so higher resolution with the 10-day European model. Here's where you see those light showers tracking across the region here as we get the day started here on Monday. Quiet out as we head into the overnight. We see a couple more areas of showers tracking through the area Tuesday night, maybe into Wednesday. This is really the first three days of the week. Just very light, localized areas of precipitation. A lot of you are going to be dry. Some folks may be seeing some showers, some light you know, sleet or freezing rain with this as we kind of hover right around the freezing mark. Again, I'm just rocking back and forth here, Monday through Wednesday, March 11th through the 13th. Just very localized, light amounts of precipitation before we kind of dry out midweek. The ridge of high pressure builds in here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Here's the system that dives over the ridge down into eastern Saskatchewan and central southern uh, Manitoba as we get into Friday. Again, not much with this one. It's going to bring in that shot of colder air with it. It's going to bring some lighter precipitation. Right now, not really anything to get excited about anywhere across the prairie. This would be some flurries, some light snow, and a shot of colder air over the weekend. And then as we take this through the weekend, this would be Saturday, getting into Sunday, and now Sunday night. Here we are Monday, getting into Tuesday. Here you see a little low, try to develop and bring some snow into the area here Wednesday and Thursday. We're all the way out to March 20th to the 21st at this point, and this is a light shot of precipitation. So, you know, don't circle that one on your calendars. This is what we have over the next 10 days. This factors in that little system that I just showed you that the European wants to slide through days 9 and 10, even factoring that in. We're talking about 5 to 10 millimeters of precipitation across much of the prairie at best over the next 10 days. So, you know, I've, I've held on to that optimism for moisture coming late winter into early spring. I still think we've got that as we move into the later part of the winter, into the, the early part of spring here, transitioning from uh, March into April. But unfortunately, we look at the GFS here, this backs it up. This is your next 10 days. It's just not happening in the next 10 to 14 days. That is not the pattern that we need. Warmer temperatures this week, trending cooler over the weekend. You'll see those blue colors uh, filling in here. Now, this is going to shift us anywhere from maybe 4 to 8 degrees Celsius, colder than average. So, again, not a shot of bitterly cold Arctic air, but it is going to be a colder, drier, uh, kind of uh, you know, maybe third to fourth week of the month of March. So, your 10-day takeaways, early to midweek showers, light precipitation, a lot of you are going to stay dry. And the folks that do see some showers, it's going to be stuff that will you know dry up here in the next 24 hours. High pressure builds in late week. It's going to bring in quiet, dry weather. We're going to be trending cooler over the weekend with those temperatures adjusting cooler uh, on the uh, the heels of that uh, shot of cold air that comes in over the weekend. Kind of settles in as we get to next week. Here's what that looks like. Once again, animating that temperature forecast. You see the blue and the green shading kind of fill in there as we get into the third week of March. This is what that looks like with your 10-day high and low temperatures. Calgary, again, quite mild. Over the next seven days, really, the highs through the weekend up around 10 degrees. You see that cooler transition, though, as we get into the mid part of next week. Those highs, once again, returning to around freezing. Of course, we'll have a chance to talk about that again next Monday before it fully settles into the region. Perhaps we'll have some, some changes to the pattern to talk about by then. Saskatoon, Regina, and then we will finish here in Winnipeg. I hope you have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you again next Monday, March 18th.